गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी इंट्रोड्यूस द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ ग्राफ टूडे विल स्टार्ट विद सम स्पेसिफिक क्लासेज ऑफ ग्राफ सो वी स्टार्ट विद सिंपल ग्राफ सो ए ग्राफ विद नो लूप्स और मल्टीप्लाइटिस देन नेक्स्ट इज नल ग्राफ सो नल ग्राफ इज द ग्राफ विद नो एजेस सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन रिप्रेजेंट ए नल ग्राफ देन द पाथ ग्राफ so it looks like a path where you can see that u1 is adjacent to u2 u2 is adjacent to u3 and so on so it is a simple graph where vertices are v1 v2 vn and edges are vi comma vi plus 1 so simple graph is extremely important throughout the course we will be focus mainly on simple graphs and these are quite important next is the cycle graph so you can see the cycles now one important thing is that path graph is represented as pn where n is the number of the vertices so if i talk of p5 it means there should be five vertices so graph of length 5 now cycle of length 4 c4 cycle of length 5 c5 cycle of length 6 c6 so cycle graph again is a simple graph where vertices are u1 u2 un and edges are u1 u2 same like the path graph with an extra edge un u1 so reaching back to the same vertex this is how we define the cycle graph sometimes we simply call it as cycle now the complete graph so again a simple graph where each vertex is adjacent to all other vertices so you can see k1 k2 k3 k4 k5 and k6 here next is bipartite graph so a graph is bipartite if you can partition the vertex set as v1 and v2 such that every edge has one end point in v1 and the other end point in v2 something like this so let's say you draw it so this is my v1 and this is my v2 so if two vertices lie in v1 or v2 they must not be known adjacent and every edge has a end point in v1 and the other end point in v2 let's see an example check if the following graph is bipartite so to prove that the graph is bipartite at this stage there is only one option that you redraw it in such a way that it get partitioned into two sets v1 v2 and satisfying the conditions of bipartiteness so if you try it by yourself you'll find that the graph is bipartite because you can draw it like this but if you have to disprove it then it's not easy which means that you have to show that there exists no such drawing where the conditions of bipartite night bipartiteness exist and therefore this result is very important which says that a graph is bipartite if and only if it has no odd cycles here odd cycles means the cycle of odd length c3 c5 c7 and so on we will prove this result later on but now if you apply this result here then you can see that there is a cycle of length 4 there is other cycle of length 4 even there is an outer cycle of length 4 but there is no cycle of length 3 5 or there is no odd cycle and therefore using the result we can say that the graph is bipartite if it has odd cycle we'll say the graph is not bipartite complete bipartite graph so complete also and bipartite also so a graph which is complete as well as bipartite denoted as k m comma n it means that every vertex in one set is adjacent to all the vertices of the other set okay 
so right now we have discussed the following notations null graph is nn path graph pn which is a simple graph then cycle graph cn complete graph kn and complete bipartite graph kmn so please do remember these notations let's try a question compute the minimum number of the edges that needs to be deleted from k5 such that the resultant graph is bipartite now one of the approach is that you draw k5 you start deleting the edges until it has no odd cycles because in k5 there are a lot of triangles so you need to delete the edges such that there is no odd cycles but if you use this approach the problem is how do you know that you have deleted the minimum number of the edges what is the mathematical proof so the other approach is that from k5 if you have to delete the minimum number of the edges then you should look for the bipartite graph with maximum number of the edges which means the complete bipartite graph so from k5 you need to go to complete bipartite graph kmn now there are only two possibilities so from k5 either you can go to k14 or you can get go to k23 k14 is same as k41 and k23 is same as k23 now in k m comma n the number of edges is mn we can easily verify by yourself it means in k14 the number of edges are 4 and in k23 the number of edges are 6 while you can count by yourself that in k5 the number of edges are 10 it means that the bipartite graph with the maximum number of the edges is k23 it means if you delete four edges then you reach to k 2 3 so the minimum number of edges to be deleted is 4 let's see one more question draw a simple graph of order 4 which decomposes into exactly three copies of p4 first recall p4 so this is p4 with four vertices it means that you need to find a graph of order 6 and size 9 such that the graph is made up of union of three p4 exactly three p4 yes please do try it by yourself i am showing you one of the answer so this is the graph because here you can see that it decomposed into 3p4 one with these bold lines then the second one with the dotted lines and this is the last one draw a simple graph with six vertices nine edges and exactly six cycles again there can be multiple answers i am showing you one of the answer so here you can see that six vertices and nine edges are visible now let's look for six cycles so if you see this structure then inside there are four triangles this is one triangle then this is second this is third this is fourth and outside also there is a cycle of length 4 so five cycles are there and this is the sixth cycle yes now how do you look at the cycles by looking at it in in the figures you may not be able to count all the cycles so cycle means that if you are starting at any vertex you are reaching back to the same vertex so from 1 you can go to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 1 therefore this is a cycle from 1 you can go to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 again this is a cycle so this is how if you see then you can try to draw 
the another graph with six vertices, nine edges, and exactly six cycles. Next is the complement of a graph. So complement of a graph is H having the same number of the vertices such that if two vertices are adjacent in H if and only if they are known adjacent in G. So if G is V comma E then you can say that H which is G bar G complement it has the same vertex set but the edge set is k n minus e if the order of the graph g is n so let's see an example this is the graph g now if you see its complement then you can see that if i label them so this is one two three and four so four is not adjacent to one two three it means in its complement 4 must be adjacent to 1, 2, 3. Now 1, 2, 3 are adjacent among themselves. Therefore, in its complement, they must be non-adjacent. So this is how complement of a graph is defined. So next is find a self-complementary graph of order 4 and of order 5. So self-complementary. Self-complementary means that if you draw a graph and if you take its complement, you must get the same graph. Okay, this is very interesting exercise. Please do try by yourself. I am providing the answer. So for order 4, P4 is the example. So if you draw P4, just to, to draw its complement, I am labeling it. But whenever we are talking of the graph, we are talking of the unlabeled graphs. So its complement is 1 is adjacent to 2, therefore 1 must be adjacent to 3 and 4. Because it is not adjacent here. So this is P4 complement we are drawing. 2 is adjacent to 1, 3, therefore 2 must be adjacent to 4. 3 must be adjacent to 1 and 4 must be adjacent to 1 and 2. So you can see that if this is P4, then its complement is also P4. So it is self-complementary. Similarly, if you try C5, C5, you will find that its complement is also C5. So P4 and C5 are self-complementary graph. You can try other examples. So that's all from today's class. In the next class, we will talk about degree of a graph. And if time allows, we will introduce the concept of subgraph. Thank you very much for watching the video.